Good evening and welcome to E! News at 8. I'm Shahan Ramkisun. It's great to have you with us. Our top stories tonight. I am a racist. I agree. Judge me on that. He's told us about bribes for contracts, bags of cash for influence and implicated top politicians in corruption. Another bombshell from Angelo Agritzi today admitting he's racist. The outrageous details in a moment. Well, as two inquiries focus on dodgy dealings, the latest research shows South Africa is showing no improvement in curbing corruption. I appreciate the fact that the government have sort of laid a basis for restructuring access. And the ANC comes under fire for its election campaign, which uses female sexuality to appeal to voters. Well, the man who's been praised for revealing the extent of state capture is now facing backlash after admitting he's racist. Former Bosasa COO Angelo Gritzis wrapped up his testimony after nine days of shocking allegations. These include alleged bribes by the company to senior prosecutors, government officials and even former President Jacob Zuma. Aldrin Pierre has the details. But once again, Chair... I am a racist. I agree. It's this admission, rather than more bribery allegations, that sparked fury. And the evidence leaders pounced on Angelo Agritzi's confession, implying his testimony could be driven by racism. It all centers on this secret recording made during a meeting Agritzi had with his bosses. They were offering 5 million rand a year over three years in exchange for his silence. During the conversation, the former Busasa COO refers to some of his colleagues using the K-word. You know what, I'll go into that company. I will personally go into that company with or without permission mm. and I will f*** each of those c***s out there. I'm telling you now, I will. I will. Agritis apologized to the commission and insists that this doesn't make his evidence less true. What I had you say there is extremely offensive. Yes. It's totally unacceptable. But that does not mean that I will not examine your evidence. The businessman's latest claim is that inmates at prisons where Busasa provides security have been tasked with carrying out crimes. At Westville, for instance, prison, they can open up the door, let out an inmate for the evening give him the instruction of what to do. He goes, he carries it out, and he's got the perfect alibi because he's been locked up all night. Nobody knows that he actually has left. Meanwhile, an attempt by RJ Gupta to cross-examine former finance minister Trevor Manuel, who is still scheduled to testify, has been denied. Aldrin Simpier, Johannesburg. Glenis Breitenbach believes she was pushed out of the NPA to stall prosecutions in the Bosasa case. That's what's been heard at the Mohoro inquiry. It's looking into two senior NPA officials' fitness to hold office. Govan Wittels has more. Well, I'm not Angelo Agrizi has previously told the state capture inquiry he approached Glenis Breitenbach for advice on how to blow the whistle on Bosasa. I had in the back of my mind knew that I was going to whistleblow. And at the Mohora inquiry, Breitenbach pulled no punches on how she says the matter was quashed. She's saying Nomtobo Jiba and Lawrence Mkhwebi paralyzed the NPA. Breitenbach believes the failed disciplinary hearing against her was a front set up to try and get rid of her. I believe that the Mendela complaint was used as a convenient excuse to remove me from the Mdluli matter. And uh, in retrospect now, knowing more than I knew then, certainly from the, uh, from the ICT matter and the uh, Vasasa matter. She has no doubt about who was behind the campaign to push her out. Uh, Ms. Jiba suspend, uh, purported to suspend me. Ms. Jiba signed my uh, letter of suspension. Um, and Ms. Jiba signed the memorandum for my suspension. Breitenbach's testimony laid bare how the infighting in the NPA allegedly affected several cases. Govan Whittles, Centurion. Is corruption getting worse in South Africa? Well, that's the perception of experts and analysts survey 
in the latest Global Corruption Perception Index. John Bailey has the details. Experts think South Africa has a corruption problem. The latest Corruption Perception Survey ranks South Africa in 73rd place. The index uses a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 is highly corrupt and 100 is very clean. South Africa had a score of 43 last year, down from 45 in 2017. Before we reach a point where we're going to gain the confidence of the public in terms of us doing something, people are going to be outraged about all these revelations. But to deal with that, we need to see our criminal justice institutions, which are our democratic institutions, kick in where perpetrators of these offences are being punished. Sub-Saharan Africa is still the worst performing region, with governments failing to put measures in place to combat corruption. Despite stagnation across the region, there were some promising political developments, particularly in Angola, Botswana, Kenya, Nigeria and South Africa. Lobby group Corruption Watch says citizen engagement and official inquiries into abuses are positive steps. Now we started to see people who were involved in corruption saying, hang on, I was part of it and now I'm ready to talk. The survey says officials who undermine parliament and the criminal justice system must be held accountable. Social media is buzzing with reaction to an ANC election campaign video. It shows a young woman seemingly using her physical appeal to draw voters. But the governing party doesn't believe it's done anything wrong. Sankelo Maseko reports. I appreciate the fact that the government have sort of laid a basis for restructuring access to water and electricity in the rural areas and social grounds for people who are vulnerable. I come from Spread View. We didn't really have parks, you know, the roads were bad. But now when you go there, things are better. There's a beautiful park there now, which is great. Would that video make you vote for the ANC? The party has sparked a debate using this young woman's looks and appeal to lure voters. One activist isn't shocked given the patriarchy deeply entrenched in the ANC. They still think that they are dealing with an unsophisticated electorate and therefore, you know, you pre bring a pretty girl out there to sell a message that speaks about dismal performance of parks and the message because it looks pretty, it will sell. I'm very happy that social media is engaging with it. So, did the ANC get it wrong? Well, the party's firebrand head of elections doesn't think so. Or is it because of a social status that actually raises an uproar that she's a model? And uh, we, we don't look at the social status. We engage with people, we don't script them. And they express their view about democracy. Rather than objectifying women, maybe the ANC should talk to South Africans about the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment and inequality. Samkele Masego, Johannesburg. The state is still confident it has a case against Fita Kupe. He's accused of being involved in the killing of seven family members in Flakfontein. His co-accused, Vusi Mabaso, allegedly committed suicide in jail. The NPA says despite Mabasa's death, it still has a strong case against Kupe. The state is continuing with the, the prosecution against accused number two, who is Mr. Fita Kupe. Remember that besides the confession, we have an affidavit which was admitted on record in court, and we had accused number one confirming that indeed it was an affidavit drafted by him. Mm -hmm. So going forward, um, the state now has to, you know, when you, when you fail on plan A, mm -hmm. you must always have a plan B. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's what the prosecutors will do from now on. Stay with us on E! News. Coming up in just over an hour or so, UK MPs have a chance to vote on their own proposals for a Brexit deal as the March deadline inches closer. Of ruling out no deal. Welcome back. President Sol Ramaphosa says he's open to criticism regarding government shortcomings. He wants South Africans to hold government accountable regarding economic growth and other issues. Ramaphosa was speaking at a business leadership gathering earlier today. 
Where, for instance, we've been tentative, a bit slow, showing lackluster commitment, you must kick us in the butt. You must kick us in the butt and say, you are not moving here. You must be willing to come forward and speak strongly. And with that, let's see how the markets perform today. Well, it's another crucial night for Britain. Prime Minister Theresa May says she'll be reopening Brexit negotiations with EU leaders. It comes just before tonight's MP vote on a series of amendments to the deal, including the controversial Irish backstop. Let's get more from our UK correspondent, Natalie Powell, who joins us now live from London. So, Natalie, I was reading articles at international online websites saying it's bound to look like a primary school class where people are screaming over each other, but they all have points to make about this Brexit deal. That's right, and I think that really goes to show just how divisive Brexit has been in the UK over the past two years of negotiations. But these amendments particularly are a chance for MPs to voice and vote on uh, what type of Brexit they would like to see pass through the doors. Of course, they're not legally binding, but what they do do is give the UK government some sense of what MPs would go for and, perhaps more importantly, they also give the EU an idea of what needs to be done in order to avoid a no-deal scenario because, uh, as we know, the UK is due to leave the EU on the 29th of March. That is what is written into law at the moment, and it will do so whether a deal is struck or not. And the ramifications of a no deal are likely to be quite disastrous, economically speaking, not just for the UK, but also for the EU. Yeah, very quickly, tell us what the EU leaders are thinking about this one. We know previously they said they weren't open to more negotiations. That's right, and that certainly still seems to be the case. The UK government has said that what they want to do is reopen this withdrawal agreement that all 28 EU member states have signed off on, including the UK. Um, but when it comes to renegotiating, which, if we're looking at the Irish border backstop issue, is something that would need to be happen, ha would need to happen, and opening up that legal text once again, well, the EU are not particularly happy about doing that, and it's. Very very likely that we are going to hear from the EU, if indeed this amendment is passed, um, about how unlikely it is that they are willing to budge on reopening that deal. We've heard in the past from the EU Commission president that the only way that he is willing to renegotiate that Irish border backstop issue is essentially for the UK government to say that it will enter a customs union with the EU. But that's very unpopular with the Brexiteers here in the UK because that would mean that their hands were tied in terms of signing off on new trade deals with other countries. All right, thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Our UK correspondent, Natalie Powell in London. Now, the West push against Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, is uh, about capturing the country's wealth. Well, that's according to Venezuela's ambassador in South Africa. The country is facing a political crisis with an imploding economy and the opposition leader declaring himself interim president. The U.S. and some Western powers are denouncing Maduro's government, calling it illegitimate. They recognize opposition leader Juan Guaido. But the ambassador believes this is about more than politics. ...is to, to take our natural resources, our problem, the real problem in Venezuela, is our natural resources. We have the bigger reserve of the oil in the world. We have the big reserve of the gold in the world. After the break, we go to Louis Fernandez at our weather center for a live weather report. There he is. And then 
Listen to this one. The Louis Vuitton bag made an unceremonious debut at the state capture inquiry this week. We investigate if it really is a nifty stash of cash. Stay with us. Welcome back. Let's check in with the weather center now. Louis Fernandez is in Cape Town. Louis, it's hot and cold. So hard to decide what to use. Shahan, well, I think hot is the way that you should go if you need to decide what to wear. Most parts of South Africa were fairly warm today, and we're going to have more of the same into tomorrow. And at the moment, we also have cloud cover that's currently moving in along the west coast. That's going to bring in a bit of morning fog for Cape Town and some of the surrounding areas and similar conditions for the opposite side of the country. So if you're close to those escarpments areas, expect some fog at first. Then heading into tomorrow afternoon, another typical summer's day expected for most of South Africa. Many areas will be hot and those thunder showers will be returning to the central and eastern parts of the country. In the Northern Cape, we could also have a couple of those thunder showers, mostly towards the far eastern parts, dry for Uppington and Prisca, where we expect maximum temperatures of 38 degrees. Cloudy in the morning for many areas in the Western Cape, including around Cape Town. And that could also bring in a bit of rain towards Hermanus, Bredasdorp and Swellendam. A little bit of drizzle for those parts at first. Thunder showers returning to much of the Eastern Cape in the afternoon. But it looks as though Port Elizabeth stays dry with a maximum of 25 degrees. And it's also going to be a dry day for the eastern parts of KwaZulu-Natal. Another hot and sticky afternoon for the area. But as you head inland, the likelihood of thunder showers increases. There's up to a 60% chance of thunderstorms on the Mpumalanga Highfelt for your Wednesday. And while we see dry weather over the eastern parts of Limpopo, elsewhere over this province, there will be a couple of isolated storms. Similar conditions into the northwest, patchy thunder showers for this province later on. It's going to be a hot day in the province. And we're going to have temperatures climbing above 30 for Bloemfontein as well as Valcom. A few thunder showers for this area, but there's a 60% chance as you head further eastwards in this area. And finally for Gauteng, isolated thunder showers in the province where temperatures are expected to stay below 30 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look further ahead to your conditions for Thursday and we're going to see thunder showers over a very similar area. It's going to be cooler along the south coast, cloudy with rain possible between George and East London. And then on Friday, that area sees very similar conditions once again. Thunderstorms spreading further into the northern Cape and we are at the moment expecting it to be an especially wet day for the areas surrounding the Drakensberg. That's all from the Weather Centre. Shahan, it's back to you. All right, thanks Louis. Appreciate it. Well, to this story now, fake or not, it's hot, right? Well, many seem to think so. Now, amid the testimony of fancy holidays, multi-million rand contracts and bribes at the state capture inquiry, emerged crucial evidence of a Louis Vuitton bag stuffed with 300,000 rand. So, we found out whether it really is a nifty stasher of cash. Slindelo Masikane takes us shopping. If you're posh and part of the rich in crowd, then you should have one or at least a few. But if you're someone like me, then a knockoff is as good as the real deal. It's all about the look, right? Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. I'm looking for a Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, I got you. You can check. Is this original? Original. Really? Okay, I like this one. Mm, how much for this one? 850. 850? Yeah. Uh, my brother, I only have 600. Hey, give me 750. 650. 650? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, not a bad deal, right? But how much poorer will you be if you buy the real deal? I would just maybe roughly say 20, 25 grand. That's just like even a small purse, a bag, that's like 10 grand, just even going up. So it's really quite expensive. Former Busasa COO Angelo Agritzi claims his wife made a nifty suggestion to smooth over deals with former SAA boss Dudu Mieni. Fill it with 300,000 rand cash. The visual is good, right? But for some of us, that's where it ends. Slindelo Masigan, Johannesburg.
<sighs> Wish I had that money. All right, here's a reminder of our top stories before we go. He's told us about bribes for contracts, bags of cash for influence, and implicated top politicians in corruption. Another bombshell from Angelo Gritzi today admitting he's racist. Well, as two inquiries focus on dodgy dealings, the latest research shows South Africa is showing no improvement in curbing corruption. And the ANC comes under fire for its election campaign, which uses female sexuality to appeal to voters. From me, Shahan Ramkisoon and the rest of the E! News team, take care and thanks for watching.